Ladies and gentlemen, let's Red Game and Zidicom video, we're going to be further discussing the Xbox One's specifications. Indeed, we're going to continue part two of our hardware specifications and architecture overview. And in this, we're going to be discussing things such as shape, the hardware move engines, the south bridge, and much more. I would, of course, encourage and behest thee to uh, check out part one if you want information on the CPU, the GPU, ESRAM or the main system memory. I've also written a corresponding article to both of them uh, which is linked in the description of this video and you could check that out. This actually the article will actually have all of the model numbers for the various bits and bobs inside the system as well as giving you guys uh, further details on exactly what each of the parts does. So let us begin First thing inside the Xbox One is the South Bridge that we're going to be discussing anyway. So the Xbox One uses a custom South Bridge which has a ridiculously long model name that will take me five minutes to go through. So once again, if you're really interested in that, you can just check it out in the article. So what exactly is a South Bridge and what does it do? Well, pretty much any computing device like say a PC or the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One will indeed have their own self bridge. Its purpose is pretty simple. It will handle communication and handle the processing of communication with different components. For example, it may help to communicate to say the hard disk drive, the Wi-Fi, the Blu-ray and even a game input controllers for example the Kinect controllers and so on. So, the basic premise is that it'll actually take away the work from the main processor and handles all the interpretation and everything else in between. So, technically, the machine would and will function without it. In other words, it, you know, the processor would still process, but the problem is there would just be nothing to process because it wouldn't be able to read any inputs or outputs. So, in other words, it wouldn't be able to pretty much load anything into main system memory. So not exactly the most exciting component but it is a very crucial component. Next one is Shape which is the Xbox One's audio block. I have done a complete video on this so you could check that out if you really want ridiculous levels of detail but this is going to focus on an overview. So what is shape? Well as I mentioned it is the audio block which lies in the heart of the Xbox One. Um, shape is completely and utterly custom designed. It was created by Microsoft exclusively and for the Xbox One. It has four tensilla DSPs, also known as Digital Signal Processing Cores, and several programmable processing engines. You've also got inside the Xbox One's XMA audio block, which allows resampling of audio, audio conversions, uh, audio filtering, I'm sorry, equalization, and so on. So the basic premise here is one of these is running control. In other words, it's telling all the other ones what to do. It's basically whipping them. The other two focus on running vector code, speech, that type of thing. And there's another one for general purpose. So there's a couple of reasons why this is all really powerful. Microsoft have basically decided to design the shape to run 512 voices slash in-game audio simultaneously. While it's doing all this, it can also process your Kinect commands. Now, the reason behind all of this is simple. The Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 have very powerful GPUs, but their CPUs are not that powerful. Remember how we've been discussing about wide processing all this time? Well, the reason behind all of that is the individual cores inside the systems aren't that powerful. They're actual T-flop performance, or G-flops. They don't even break into T-flops. Um, it's actually lower than say the PlayStation 3's cell. That's that's a fact, you can Google it. And so the basic premise is that with the Xbox 360, um, with the Xbox 360, one of the uh, six hardware threads, there were six hardware threads inside the Xbox 360, that's two per each of the three cores, so if you do two times three is six, and one of those 
sometimes more was actually allocated to game audio and that's not really an effect effective or efficient way to work so effectively Microsoft have said you know what that's not what we want to do let's beef up and vastly improve this for the Xbox one in the article as well, there are some links which point you in the direction of the PlayStation 4's own audio DSP, own dedicated audio processing unit, and you can check that out and see what the difference is between the Xbox One and the PS4. Next, we have to discuss the hardware move engines. So the Xbox One features four of these hardware move engines, and they're fixed function processors. In other words, the functions are basically baked in to the processors. The job is fairly simple. It's pretty much to move data around the Xbox One's buses. In other words, okay, well, I need to send data to the GPU, I need to send data to the CPU, I need to pull data from the ESRAM and copy it to DDR3, and so on. So, Right now, you're thinking to yourself, okay, well, why are they there? Why doesn't the CPU just do all this? Why doesn't the GPU do this? Because remember, the GPU can do this, so can the CPU. Well, once again, just like shape, it's pretty simple reasoning. It's to free up resources. In theory, if the hardware move engines are doing this while the CPU and the GPU at 100% capacity, in other words, they physically cannot process any more data, they are running flat out. You're actually getting more performance out of the system because the CPU and the GPU simply do not have to text uh, sorry, simply do not have to waste cycles moving data around themselves. In other words, they can focus on their own tasks, for example, running compute, you know, doing AI, creating the game world, so on, so on, so on. Rather than saying, hey, you know what I need to do? I need to move um, this piece of data and send it to the CPU, or I need this piece of RAM, sorry, this piece of data from, say, the ESRAM. So it could also do things such as focusing on or handling LZ compression and much more. I have written an absolutely ridiculously lengthy hardware move engine uh, guide, so you could check that out if you want to know a ridiculous amount of, of stuff on move engine. You could find that in the link. Um, in the video description should you so really wish once again I'm creating this video as, as kind of like an overview for you to understand what's inside the Xbox one Because if I was to go through everything in ridiculous detail this video series would become you know 30 minutes each part And so this is just to give you guys an idea real quick So next part is the eight gigabytes of flash memory inside the system now before we go any further I'd like to point out that this is nothing to do with the DDR3. This is actually an additional 8 gigabytes of RAM. Before you get excited and start yelling, well, that means the Xbox One has 16 gigabytes of memory. Not really. So this is flash memory, and it has a ridiculously lengthy name, but it's basically created by SK Hinux. You can once again check out the uh, ridiculously lengthy name. It's like H264. Um, M4, 200, 3G, and so on and so on. So I'm not going to bother to read it all out because you'll go into a coma by the time I've finished. However, um, we're not exactly certain what its purpose is yet. In other words, not everything is revealed. Microsoft haven't said, hey guys, by the way. Um, indeed, what we are sure about is its existence. Most likely it's there for things such as either a swap file, it's possibly there for app snapping, it's possibly there for say storing as a quick store for say gameplay footage as you're recording on the on the fly. It's also most likely um, got a role of some description in standby mode. Once again it's 8 gigabytes and to me it's not exactly a coinky dink that the DDR3 memory happens to be 8 gigs and this sucker also happens to be 8 gigs. So there's definitely some interplay there. I'm just not exactly sure what it is. And no one else is outside of Microsoft, or at least they're not telling us yet. So the Xbox One also has an Ethernet controller. Super duper exciting, I know, but there you have it. It's not exactly unique, it's not exactly exciting but it is there and it's designed to handle communications of course with the traditional good old-fashioned network cable 
For those of us, such as myself, who are still using wired connections because we've got our systems right next to our, you know, router or modem or whatever, it's pretty damn, well, if we want to play on the internet, a pretty damn important vital part of the machine. Realtek are actually using this. It's actually not such a long name, so I can actually read it out for once. It's Realtek's RTL8151GNM. So that's Graham Norman Mother. In case you're thinking to yourself, hmm, real thing, they sound familiar. Most likely you've seen them in your own device manager for, say, your Windows based PC or Linux, whatever you're running. Um, Realtek pretty much are responsible for integrated components on a huge wide variety of different boards uh, on the PC. They will typically supply either audio or They'll supply things such as, well, the network connection, surprisingly. And that, my friends, is about it for this particular video. I know, I've actually got a tech video that's under 20 minutes. I think that's some type of record. In fact, it's about half the time. But, as I said, I wanted this to be an overview and bite-sized chunk for someone so they can just get an overview. I would also point out, as I said, that I have ridiculously in-depth um, detail to the point of nauseam on pretty much any of these topics on the channel. Um, so you guys can search on, you know, go to the Red Gaming Tech channel and you can just search for it for the topic. For example, you can type in shape or, you know, ESRAM or whatever and a ludicrous amount of detail shall pop up, my friends. Anyway, um, so what's left to actually discuss on the Xbox One? You know, there's still parts, isn't there? Sure there is. Um, I've not discussed Connect because that's a pretty big topic in and of itself. And I want to also speak a lot about how the operating systems inside the Xbox One function. Because I still find that a few people are confused on this. So we're also going to discuss that in an upcoming video as well and probably going to show you guys some examples using like a virtual OS or something, maybe a couple of virtual OS's, just cause, too. And anyway, I think that's just about it for now, so hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon, take care, bye for now.